Good morning. This morning we're continuing a series of sermons about preparing our culture for the coming of Christ. And as we go through these sermons, we're going to be looking at the lives of five women who transformed our world. They didn't always know that. Their lives at times seemed very difficult. But in individual ways, actions they took led to something that changed our world and made a difference for you and for me. Today we're going to begin in Joshua chapter 2. If you'll you'll turn to that passage, we'll be looking at Joshua chapters 2 and 6. Also a little bit, Hebrews chapter 11. James chapter 2 and the passage that was just read to us. In, in our lives, as we, intera- as we grow and as we interact with others, we become aware that there's this phenomenon that's called peer pressure. What other people think begins to make a difference to you and to me. It may influence the clothes that we wear. It may influence the, the, the uh, color of our hair. Right now, a couple of men in the congregation, there's a little bit of subtle peer pressure as they notice that some of the men around them are beginning to have beards and they don't. But we have pressures of of which we're aware in our own individual ways that bear upon us and to which we, at some level of awareness, want to conform because we want to fit in. Don't you want people to like you? Most people do. Okay, so I, I grant there are perhaps people out there that really don't want people to like them, but most of us, I think, do. Want to be accepted and want to have a sense that we're part of the larger whole. So what do we do when we become aware that what people expect and what people want and what people are encouraging us to accept clashes with what the Bible teaches, with what we see Jesus as projecting, with what our value, with what our values are. What do we do when society's values clash with what a Christian should do? That sounds like it ought to be an easy question and to answer, but I think most of us know it can be very, very difficult when we're trying to fit in. And here's the hard question for this morning as we think about this passage. Are we willing to risk cultural rebuke in order to be faithful to God? Are we willing to take a risk to stand up and say, wait, that's not right. There's a better way. As we look this morning, we're going to look at a woman who perhaps moved in the shadows of her own society, whose occupation may or may not have been culturally accepted, that she had to make a decision about whether she would go with her culture or with a way of thinking with a cultural movement that was coming in that was not accepted by her own people. 
Joshua chapter 2 begins. Joshua the son of Nun sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute, whose name was Rahab, and lodged there. Jericho possibly is the, old, the world's oldest walled city. When you read uh, reference works about, about this city and how old it really, really is, how long people have settled at this site, you realize why in, in Joshua's time when Israel came out of, the, out of the wilderness and crossed the Jordan River into the land that they had been told God had promised them, and this was the first city, the first town that they had to overcome to realize that promise, to make it a reality. That they faced a sea that already was, was slightly elevated along, around its, above its surroundings because it was built on previous generations of hundreds, even thousands of years of settlement at Jericho. The world's oldest wall. See, there was definitely a wall around this city. And visitors to that city to this day can see ruins, substantial, strong foundations of walls that were built around Jericho hundreds of years before the Israelites got there. Who was Rahab? Well, when we read the description about Rahab in chapter 2, what we're going to notice is she talks about her family at length. She talks about her parents. She talks about her brothers and sisters. She doesn't mention a husband. She doesn't mention any children. I think we can fairly infer that Rahab was a single woman. As a prostitute, her work exposed her to degrading and potentially abusive situations. She probably was sort of on the outskirts of society. And she may have had some real trouble trusting, trusting, and especially trusting men. Which really, I think, emphasizes the difficulty of the decision she had to make in this situation. In part because to overcome, to escape what, where she was, she had to trust. As we continue reading in, in Joshua chapter 2, it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. As these spies that had been sent by the leader of Israel, Joshua, came into Jericho, they went to this place, uh, Josephus, in the first century, a writer of history, writing a history for the Romans about the Jewish people, referred to this specific instance, referred to Rahab as an innkeeper, as he wrote, uh, trying to make a positive presentation of the Jewish people to, to the Romans. They went to a place where they thought they could they could blend in where they could get in secretly without being noticed, but they had been noticed. Jericho was not a huge city. Probably two, three thousand, probably what we call small town. Smaller than Lansing. But it had a wall around it, a substantial stone wall around it. And so as strangers came into the town and went to Rahab's 
place, they, they were noticed. And it was reported to the leaders of the city. And the other thing we pick up from this account is that everybody was aware that Israel's army was approaching. That attack was near. So, the leaders of the city send away him. They said, bring these men out. They're spies. They've come to search us out. And she says, true, two men came to me. But she had hidden them. And she said, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And when the gate was about to be closed to dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax that she had laid on the roof. So the men pursued after them on the way to the Jordan as far as the fords, and the gate was shut as soon as the pursuers had gone out. Before the men laid down, she came up to them on the roof, and she said to the, said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that the fear of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you, when, we came, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted. And there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal kindly with my father's house. And give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, Our lives for yours even to death and if you do not tell this business of ours, then when, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully to you. So the city is aware that invaders are approaching their city, a very large enemy force. The leaders of the city are aware that two spies have entered, that they have entered into Rahab's establishment, and they say, bring them out. They're coming to destroy us. And she says, oh no, you need to go, go away. They, they, they've left. But she's hidden them. And she tells them What is going through her heart? And as we look at these verses, we can see some things that, as we look and think about this later, we'll realize by faith Rahab did some things here. By faith, Rahab believed the reports about Israel. She heard about this group of people that had come out of slavery in Egypt, gone through the desert, and now suddenly they were approaching her town. Possibly couldn't see them yet, but she believed the reports. She did not say fake news and refused to believe them. She believed the reports about Israel. She was afraid. She feared not only what their Israel's approach would mean for her city, but for her family. And for her. But also here, too, coming from her pagan culture, this woman, this young woman realized something real was going on here. Something different was happening with Israel than had been happening with her people. the delivery that had happened to those slaves in Egypt as a large group of people was one that perhaps she wanted for herself and she believed 
that the God of Israel could make it happen. So by faith she hid enemy spies and even resisted the the call to give them up. And she advised the spies on the safest way to get back to their camp. Because what do we do if we're going back home? We try generally to take the shortest route. This time the shortest route would have put the spies right into contact with the people who had gone out to catch them. So she told them how to avoid being captured. While she sent the soldiers from Jericho in the wrong direction. And then after she and the spies negotiated, she told them what she wanted. And they said, that's nice that you want that, but you're going to have to do this. She obeyed the spies' instructions. Even though it may not have made much sense to her, even though she may have had resistance from others she knew, saying, oh, we're going to be able to hold these people off. She believed and she obeyed. We turn over to Joshua chapter 6. The spies do indeed return to Joshua. They tell him about the city, all that they've been sent to learn. They say, oh, by the way, there's a family. And specifically, a woman in this city who has been a great help to us. And we promised her that if she, she put a scarlet cord outside her window, that we would make sure that she and her family were rescued. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 17, Joshua, the leader of Israel, Gives his, giving his marching instructions to his troops. He says, The city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute, the harlot, and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. And later, Joshua gives instructions to the spies, and he says, Go to the prostitute's house and bring out from there the woman and all who belong to her as you swore to her. I think most of us who went to Bible class as children know about the attack on Jericho. About how the people of Israel marched around the city six times. Now, I was thinking about this. I'm thinking the people, you know, I'm sure Bryce back there could tell us the story really well. They marched around the city six times. And then the seventh time, what was different? The first six times, they didn't say anything. Each day, they went out and marched around the city one time. Then the final day, as they marched around a seventh time, they did it with a loud shout. And the walls of the city collapsed. Have you ever thought what it would have been like to be inside the city? And each day, see this, large, see this military force come out and, and march around your city, not, not yelling, not making any noise, just marching what we might call a show of force. But not attacking. Day one. Day two. Day three. Day four. Day five. Day six. The apprehension mounts within the city and even within Rahab's house, perhaps Rahab's saying, what have I done? Don't they see my cord hanging out of my window? 
Are they really going to rescue me? But when the walls fall, indeed, the two spies who, who had made the promise go in and they bring out Rahab and her father and mother and brothers and all who belong to her. And they brought all her relatives and put them outside the camp of Israel. As we think about what Rahab's decisions and actions meant to her future and what they might possibly have to do with us, I want to let you know as I prepare for this sermon, I didn't do it by myself. I enlisted some help. And I'll be doing this during the next few sermons. And when I have permission, I'll let you know who helped. But if, and uh, today, as I was pondering what was going on with Rahab, Nancy Skelton helped me get some insight into what Rahab's situation might have been and might, might have been driving her and what might have influenced her. But the army, after they rescue Rahab, then they burn the city and everything and everyone else in it. And only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab and the prostitute and her father's household and all who belonged to her, Joshua saved alive. And it says she has lived in Israel to this day, the day that the book was written, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 talks about this event. It says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. We call Hebrews chapter 11 the hall of fame of faith. You've got Abraham. You've got Jacob. You've got David and Barak and all these great leaders. And you've got Rahab. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient. Because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And in James chapter 2 verse 24. As it talks about the faith of what, what faith is and how faith is not just believing something. Because Rahab could have believed, oh, they've got a, Israel's got a big army out here, and it's looking bad for our people. But maybe our army will be able to hold them off. Or maybe, maybe they won't, but there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing I can do to make a difference. James chapter 2 verse 24 says you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone and he goes on to say in the next verse and in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead so also faith apart from works is dead. Rahab didn't just believe, she acted. The consequences of Rahab's risky faith come to light even more in Matthew chapter 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. And down in verse 5, and Salmon, the father of Boaz, by Rahab. So, there in the descendants of Abraham, Salmon, the son of Nashon, the prince, the leader of the tribe of Judah in the time of Joshua, marries Rahab in the end. And they have a son named Boaz, about whom we'll learn more next week. One of the things we learn about Rahab is that authentic faith shows its true colors when it's tested. Because this young woman didn't have to do anything. 
Nobody expected her to. The spies may have hoped, may have hoped that she would help them. But it was a desperate hope and she wasn't exactly the person that you would expect to be able to give a lot of help. And even after she's delivered, Joshua chapter 6 tells us that they took her and her family and they settled them outside the camp. Who lived outside the camp? Well, the people that weren't members of Israel. The people that weren't clean, the lepers. And the people who were not fully incorporated into the body of Israel yet. Rahab ultimately would be, as she married into the family of Adashan and Salmon. Hebrews chapter 13, a couple of chapters after it talks about Rahab and her faith and her demonstration of her faith, concludes, so Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Even as Rahab escaped the destruction of Jericho, she didn't immediately go into a wonderful situation. She was still outside the camp among the undesirables. But by faith, she persisted. So Jesus many generations later and her family suffered, was crucified outside the city as a sign of his rejection by the people. But his death brought our deliverance. And the message of Rahab, the message of Hebrews is that Sometimes being faithful to Jesus, being faithful to God, means that we have to go outside the camp. We have to take stands for things that may not be socially accepted. Because they're right. Because it's the ethical thing today to do. Sometimes we may, as Christians, have to stand up for people that no one else will stand up for and go outside the camp if you will to stand up for them and that happened in this story the spies stood up for Rahab the prostitute a woman whose whose occupation was not, a, not approved in, in Israel among God's people. But they saw her faith, her works. They stood up for her. There are people who today are hurting or vulnerable who need Christians to stand up for them and to show them the way to believe and to act on their faith. Because while we, we want to be accepted, while we want to, to fit in, we have to remember as Christians that here we have no lasting city, but our eyes are forward, forward focused. That we're looking to, after this life, where our destination shall be. And we're looking to living a life here and now, in which we can live with ourselves as we live in favor with our God, in which we have no guilt about the decisions we have made, about whether we have hurt people. Serving God may put us at odds with our culture, but we can overcome that fear of our peers through active faith. 
And we as God's people, with God, can rescue the most vulnerable and at risk, at risk people. Rahab had the courage because of what she now believed about God to take about action that was actively discouraged by her society. Do you have the courage to believe God when society does not? Do you have the humility to follow his way to, to as Rahab did with the spies, follow instructions? Learn, study God's word and learn his will. Rahab really risked her life. If you think about it, she had to be seen as a collaborator, as a traitor by her people as, as they learned what she had done. Are you willing to risk your life to find hope? In Christ. So today as we think about Rahab, a woman who overcame through faith, through a courage that enabled her to take initiative and to step out. Are you willing to step out and say, I believe in God. I believe that Jesus is his son. And I'm going to be buried in water and baptism to demonstrate my faith so that God may save me and add me to his people so I may come in from outside the camp and be forgiven. As a Christian, maybe you need encouragement today to keep walking the walk, to be faithful. Whatever your needs, if you need to come today, Please come as, as we sing this prayer today to the Lord and Father of mankind.